Okay, we're back here at Live Estrada Hadoop World. Day two of two day was extensive coverage of SiliconANGLE.com. Live in New York City for Estrada plus Hadoop World. This is the big data show, transformative show. I'm with Dave Vellante here. Joined with Michelle Bailey, Chief Data Science of Stealth Startup VDP Finder, uh, which we know a little bit about. Um, Michelle, welcome back on theCUBE. Thanks, John. Um, what are you seeing out here? You've had a chance to uh, rub elbows with your fellow data scientists. We had a few data scientists on the show ourselves here at theCUBE, Jeff Hammerbacher. Um, you had a chance to peruse the, the booths, uh, packed house. Uh, did you get an up-close view of anything? So there's a lot of, um, I think, differences here than what we saw definitely at the HBase Conf, right? So, um, you know, if you even think back to April, I, I, I look at how different the market has become in just that sort of six month time period. So um, there's definitely a lot of developers here. Um, there were a lot of people in the sessions that had their laptops open and they were programming as they were trying to watch what the presenter was saying. So there was a lot of that going <laughs> Mash on. Mashup camp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think there's a lot of suits here too, right? And I think um, when I went up to the floor, the demarcation definitely is um, the analytics section from sort of what I would call the mechanics and the plumbing and the infrastructure section, right? So there's a lot of developers, I think, still tremendously in interested in um, how they can evolve Hadoop, um, how they can um, certainly look to a lot of real-time um, type of approaches with the data. Um, so there's a lot of those guys still there, but I think what we're starting to see is um, really the beginning or the signal of the new application era for big data. And I think the step before that is analytics. Um, and you know, I feel the same way, right? I'm looking for anything I can get my hands on that really gets me to information, which really gets us to the decision and the action. Um, so we so I've seen a really good mix today. I think there's um, there's a couple of companies I'm going to follow up with as a result of the conference. Digital reasoning is going to be one of them. Um, they had a really a tremendous presentation at the end of yesterday. Um, a guy called Rob Metcalf, not to be confused with Bob Metcalf. Um, yeah, and Tim Estes, the CEO, he's been on uh, the Cube yeah, before. Yeah, just really, they are really interested cool in technology. what they um, were able to put forward. So um, they've got some really interesting approaches to machine learning around text mining um, that I think are probably way out in front of other things that I've seen so far. Um, so that's something I, I really want to follow up on. And um, then I also want to follow up too with Platfora. I thought that they, really looking forward to seeing what they have coming out. Um, just around data exploration, and um, you know that's an area that's really difficult, right? Just with um, the whole process of ETL right now, and the length of time that's taking, and um, just the ability to be able to get in, explore the data really quickly, and, and get a sort of quick and dirty view of what's going on before I go on and do more in-depth analytics there. Um, so th they really stood out to me as a couple of companies to follow up with, and then. Um, what I also saw, which was really interesting, and I thought some of the best um, presentations was around um, uh, companies or um, governments that are doing work with big data. So um, the CTO of Chicago, um, the city of, uh, of Chicago was, did a really, really good presentation. He talked a lot about how they're using um, geospatial technologies to improve the transit organization, how they're looking um, to leverage that data with their health department. Gave a really great example of how they were able to follow um, uh, changes or um, outages in the transit system and um, being able to use Twitter data as more of a reliable and faster approach to understanding um, where the outages are in transport. And then um, in terms of healthcare um, or in the health department, um, being able to use Twitter as a way to reach out to people who've had food poisoning and be able to go out and then um, talk with the restaurants that were the culprits as part of that. It's really, really interesting ways that they've been using data. And um, you know, for some of that, it's time sensitive, and so real time is important. And then for a lot of other analytics, it's not time sensitive, right? And it's really much more about being able to demonstrate trends and build really good models and algorithms. So What's the, what was the feeling on the floor, Obviously besides being mega crowded? Um, uh, what's going on in your vibe there? What, what did you extract uh, out of the noise there? What's the signal coming out of the, the um, show? So I think still a lot of, um, certainly a lot of activity, right? Um, I think certainly what we're seeing is, um, what I like to call is like, uh, there's a lot of openness, right? So a lot of transparency about how imperfect everything is, um, about how people are really looking to share, right? I think that's something really different about this community right now than other tech communities. Um, and how a lot of people are actually learning from the mistakes more than they're actually learning from some of the successes at the moment. So 
Um, there was a lot of that going on. Definitely a lot of interest around some of the big companies. Clearly, Cloudera had a lot of the action upstairs on the floor. Um, but also SAP was up there. There was a lot of interest there. Um, and that bar. And then when you went into the floor, I would say that there was more attention being paid to a lot of the smaller analytics startups that were up there rather than necessarily infrastructure players in there. Um, that was certainly the impression that I got as time went on. How about um, fellow data scientists? I don't know if you had a chance to collaborate with them. I'm sure you run into some, but, uh, but talk a little bit about you know, what your crowd is dealing with, what the challenges are. Um, you know, what are the things that are most pressing that you're trying to solve? Um, so our problems are, or our challenges are around text analytics and um, pretty much the consensus that I took away from this conference was that there still aren't good solutions around there around text analytics for um, things like Twitter, for example, right? So um, there's been a lot of good work done around text analytics around more classic unstructured data like email, for example, or documents or um, things that we typically see in that realm, but um, Twitter remains a real challenge and it's a challenge for us as well um, and solving some of the, the analytics problems around that. Um, and then I think to um, some emphasis around real time, but I think much more around um, sort of data exploration and be able to get your hands around the data faster and um, you know we saw a lot of attention being paid to tools that um, circa navigate the whole ETL process right so you're going native direct to Hadoop um, or HBase so um, that seems to be the consensus right now but it really depends on your point of view right if you're the data scientist that's more involved on the analytic side and the stat side you've got a whole different range of problems than what we're seeing on the data scientists that I would consider more on the, the programming side and the comp side um, side of things and so I think what we're going to see is you know, the market start to bifurcate a little bit, right? You've got data scientists that have very, very different problems. And, um, and that's where you see that in a, a conference like this, where you see such a mix of sort of younger comp sci programmers here with the older herd trying to answer sort of big analytic questions. Nice crowd, though. You got the young, yeah, young really guns, nice crowd, the yep. young guns here, and you got the older dudes. Yep. I wasn't quite sure where I fit. A lot so. of tall guys, right? You <laughs> notice <laughs> observation. All the big data, they're all four. like tall. <laughs> big data people are big, like vertically big. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed that? It that's is true. Really true. Any other yeah. observations? Yeah, so something else that's going on that I think is going to be really interesting is um, uh, I'm trying to think who was describing it. Ken Richardson, I think was his name, but he had this whole approach around what he was calling data philanthropy. So um, using data to solve problems within communities um, or perhaps even in third world countries. He was from the UN organization. And um, he was really here to try and seek out people that can share their data sets. Um, so maybe you go to Citibank and you get some information from Citibank that's been scrubbed where you know obviously they um, maintain all the confidentiality of the data, but they can share that with the UN in ways in which they can use it perhaps in um, third world nations. So he talked a lot about um, being able to use Twitter to monitor what happens after an earthquake or being able to use Twitter for um, cholera outbreaks because as we know in areas like Africa they're um, a lot more active on um, mobile devices and, and social media than mm -hmm. what we even are in some of these developed countries so um, he has this whole notion of data philanthropy where either you commit your time as a data scientist to a problem um, you actually give um, put together data sets and then I saw that as well when um, I went to the um, presentation for the city of Chicago they're also looking for people to get together and combine data sets to come up with ways to solve problems that can help at the local level um, so th I thought that was really pretty fascinating and um, and then I think some of the emerging things we're starting to hear about is things like regulatory right what does it mean um, if you're giving out these data sets um, are people's confidential is the confidentiality around data really maintained um, and so you saw some risk management type of tools out there that are really helping to solve those problems around maintaining um, individuals' confidentiality within large data sets. Yeah, so the privacy, you know, we, we were talking to Jeff Jonas of IBM about uh, geospatial. It's called geospatial superfood. He's yeah. doing some, Jeff Jonas is a mad scientist for IBM. He's a great guy. And yeah. So he was talking about how what he's, the problem he's trying to focus on is to engineer privacy into yeah. you know, the system. You know, it's like security, right? Everybody says if you bolt it on, it's not going to be effective if you engineer it in. So those are some of the things that you haven't heard a lot about, but this year you're hearing a lot more. Yeah. You know, and then of course the, you have you have the Senate, you know, Senate Rockef Senator Rockefeller going after Equifax and, and and Experian and inquiring about you know the data sources that they're collecting. I mean, it's like such a little tiny piece of the puzzle. I mean, that's just going to 
like we're here in Sherman, like it's going to explode. You know how? And I think some of that gets okay. back to quality issues too, right? It's not just about confidentiality, but understanding mm. um, quality. And um, you know, if a company is taking action from bad data, um, I think that at some point we should all be made aware of that, right? So. Um, again, what I've seen so far in this in this community is a lot of transparency, right? A sharing of the good and the bad and the ugly, and being very, very open about that. And I think what we want to watch for is does that conversation get closed off? What about competition? Point? What are you seeing about competition? Because we were just talking with uh, Carmela from Clear Story, and you know, she brings up this whole point that you know technology got us into this problem of data. So this is not like we're creating technology to solve a problem. It's a problem that needs to be solved and there's, there's not enough engineers to solve the problem, which that translates to definitely market opportunity. So there's more basically fruit on the trees than people that could actually eat them, if you want to use that analogy of the entrepreneur's wealth opportunity. So like to create value, there's a lot of beachhead for entrepreneurs to pick a position and be very lucrative and create a viable venture. Yeah, so no that doubt. changes the dynamics. It's not, there's no one's fighting over the same food. There's, there's food for everyone. There's market for everyone. So what do you see now? So I, I think the problem is at the moment, everybody's trying to measure value on how can we solve the data management problem, right? So clearly data explosion, data growth is something that's a very, very real problem for the enterprise at the moment. And um, what we've tended to see is that people that can come into their IT environment or IT org and solve that problem and sort of harness, get a, um, their hands around data, um, that's how they're selling the value of um, more of these big data solutions. I think where we need to go and where we're just starting to see this now is the value's really around analytics, right? And taking your data, getting answers out of it and solving problems with it. And I think that's why you're starting to see a different crowd start to come into this community right now. And that's really the right place to be able to assess value. Um, I think what else is interesting, and I've heard a little bit about this right now, and I saw this um, in the virtualization market um, after the market had been moving for a couple of years, was that we're starting to hear people talk about their big data environment at their company as being the environment that's actually got the attention right now and is being well managed, right? As opposed to the other environment where there's not as much attention at the moment and a lot of that tends to um, still grow um, unattended. So. I think that's something really to watch for too as we see the value story play out is that um, is it like virtualization where suddenly the virtual environment was where all the sysadmins were, where they were spending all their time and were actually taking care of the environment and driving things like higher availability. Once we start to see that coming into big data, then you start to see much more co-opetition, right, with some of the more traditional data warehouse solutions. Um, so that's definitely something that's just starting to emerge right now around, around the whole value notion. Okay, we are here inside the cube with Michelle Bailey. This is Silicon Angle's coverage of uh, Strata, winding down day two. Um, great event, everyone's kind of packing their bags and end of the sessions. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.